we shall uh, talk about uh, Kubo formula, uh, basically the formalism to calculate conductivity. Uh, and um, this uh, particularly we keep in mind about the Hall conductivity, which uh, is the main focus uh, for this course. So, uh, let us see how uh, the Kubo formula is derived and uh, this is uh, derived within linear response theory. Okay, so, this is an example of calculating conductivity uh, within a linear response theory. So, uh, the assumption is such that uh, one has uh, uh, many body system. Uh, so, it is not just one particle which we have considered while we considered Schrodinger equation and solved uh, for a single uh, electron say uh, in presence of a magnetic field. So, uh, there is a presence of uh, uh, many particles and so we uh, talk about a many particle Hamiltonian. So, this is that uh, many particle uh, Hamiltonian. Now, why I write it with a 0 is that uh, this uh, does not contain the perturbation term that we are going to talk about. However, uh, this uh, can contain interparticle interactions present in the system. Okay? So, that is not uh, an embargo here. So, H0 may contain uh, interparticle interaction. And now, we are uh, going to talk about the perturbation that is introduced because of an external field. Now, in this particular case that we have talked about, um, it is the electromagnetic field rather there is an electric field in the uh, longitudinal direction and there is a perpendicular magnetic field being present. However, it is uh, enough for us to talk about only one kind of uh, field and uh, that could be say just an electric field, but then it can be uh, generalized into uh, both electric and magnetic fields. So, let me uh, write down a general Hamiltonian um, in presence of an electromagnetic field. Uh, we can uh, <coughs> do a particular case uh, for an electric field later. So, uh, we have said this that the Hamiltonian actually uh, comprises of uh, P uh, minus Q A um, whole square over 2 m, where this A is the vector potential that comes in because of uh, an external field. And uh, one can actually talk about the gauge freedom because uh, these A uh, or the vector potential uh, can be uncertain uh, by an amount which is uh, delta lambda where lambda is a scalar function. And this is perfectly acceptable because uh, even if you add or subtract a gradient of a scalar function uh, B equal to curl A is still satisfied. So, uh, if we expand this Hamiltonian and if you want to write it uh, specifically for the electron, then you introduce this uh, Q equal to uh, minus E. So, this is my Hamiltonian. Now, what I am going to do is that I am going to expand this. Uh, so, this is a, a P square over 2 m and then there is a 1 over 2 m and uh, then I have a term, uh, I can write it as E over 2 m and then there is a term which is like P dot A uh, and A dot P. Now, in general, uh, they do not commute, uh, that is why we have to write it separately, uh, but uh, if you choose a particular gauge called as a Coulomb gauge, which we will just see, uh, then these two terms can be combined into one term. And then of course, you have a term which is A square over 2 m and um, uh, e square over 2 m into a square and uh, this term is called as the paramagnetic term. And this is called as a diamagnetic term. Okay. Now, it turns out uh, that uh, we will neglect this diamagnetic term. And in the parlance of uh, perturbation theory, you can say that uh, you know if B is not strong enough, then A would also be weak. So, a term which is of the order of A square can be neglected. However, uh, we have seen that uh, in our case, the magnetic field B is not weak at all. And then uh, we need to take into account terms uh, such as uh, B square or A square. Uh, 
However, it does not contribute to the Hall conductivity even though it uh, contributes to the uh, longitudinal conductivity. However, since the uh, main focus is on Hall conductivity, we will uh, drop the diamagnetic term uh, altogether and only uh, worry about the, the paramagnetic term. This is of course, the unperturbed problem which uh, is uh, solved in the sense that uh, these unperturbed problem we know that th suppose uh, this and uh, this acts on uh, some uh, wave function psi m will give you a E m psi m and that problem is known. Okay. So, which means that this unperturbed term which is a part of the many particle Hamiltonian is known um, or at least uh, if you even add inter particle interaction uh, the assumption is that uh, that problem is completely solved and we have to only look at the effect of the paramagnetic term. Okay. So, uh, this uh, term can be written as uh, so we uh, specialize into this term for the moment uh, which is p dot a plus uh, a dot p and uh, suppose uh, we act so this is that uh, the paramagnetic term so let's let me call this as hp and uh, let this call this as hd uh, d for the diamagnetic and p for the paramagnetic so hp is uh, like this so if i want to understand that how do i do a simplification of this I consider an arbitrary state psi and uh, then this will be like E over 2 m. Uh, now, your uh, p dot a is minus i h cross del and dot dotted with a and uh, plus uh, a um, into minus i h cross del uh, and uh, this acts on psi. Okay. So, look at this term. Uh, this term actually looks like a del and a psi okay, where a is the vector potential. So, this is like uh, a dot uh, del psi and the plus a psi equal to psi uh, del dot a. Okay. So, there are these two terms that are present. Now, you see that this uh, is actually there are two terms and um, these uh, term if we consider that a gauge where this uh, equal to 0 this is called as a coulomb gauge and uh, in this coulomb gauge it only uh, is left with this term which is same as this term okay so with this minus ih cross adjusted there and so these two terms can be combined and uh, one can write down just one uh, term which is so this paramagnetic term uh, which now uh, let me call it as delta h or h prime whatever you want to call it it is that extra term whose effect needs to be you know considered and this is nothing but this is equal to e over i h cross uh, so this is a minus i h cross e over m and a, a dot del okay so this we want to consider its effects on psi m okay which is the unperturbed state so, we are uh, really doing a perturbation theory, uh, but in this case it is slightly different notionally uh, from the perturbation theory that you might have learnt uh, in your second course of quantum mechanics or even in the first course of quantum mechanics. This is done on a system of many particles. Okay. So, uh, once we uh, know uh, this, so you, our Hamiltonian has a form which is uh, uh, apart from these uh, constants which uh, we can um, take into account. So, the constants are like this. This is nothing but, so if you take the minus i h cross this uh, delta h takes a form uh, equal to, so minus i h cross del. So, this is E uh, a dot p uh, over m and uh, so the p is the momentum. So, this is p over m is v and E into v is equal to so, we can write this as, uh, uh, so uh, there is, uh, I think uh, there is a sign that is missed here. So, this, there should not be any sign. 
So, there is a, a, a sign that uh, comes here uh, and uh, that tells you that this uh, V over M, P over M becomes equal to V and then E into V becomes equal to um, current density. So, this is actually equal to minus J dot A. Okay? So, we are going to work with this as the perturbation which is minus J dot A and this perturbation, uh, the effect of this perturbation to linear order in A is what we actually talk about when we um, do this. Okay? So, let me write down the perturbation uh, term and this effect of this would be considered uh, on the conductivity of the problem and in particular we talk about the, the Hall conductivity. Okay? It can also be used uh, in order to calculate the longitudinal conductivity which we are not doing here but can be done and also it is important to remember that you uh, need to take into account the, the A square term uh, which is uh, nothing but the diamagnetic term here. Okay? So, this is our uh, like our starting point of a perturbation theory uh, in this particular case. Now, in order to proceed further, uh, there are a few simplifications or, or even you can call them as tricks. Uh, these tricks are being introduced uh, to you know make life simpler uh, and uh, to achieve the goal uh, in a manner that we wish to uh, such as uh, we there is no need but of course uh, we take uh, uh, because these fields are DC fields. DC means they are constant fields uh, either the electric field or the magnetic field. However, we take them to be uh, an alternating field that is uh, uh, we uh, talk about an AC field and with uh, which um, sort of oscillates with a characteristic frequency omega. And uh, as I said that there is no um, a problem if we simply talk about just the electric field even though we know that uh, there is a whole uh, there is a magnetic field there which moves the electrons in the transverse direction and uh, that is how they pile up the charges pile up uh, at the edges which gives rise to Hall um, conductivity. However, we will simply talk about electric field and do a linear response theory only with the electric field. Okay? So, uh, let us uh, consider an electric field of this form. So, this is your E0 and um, uh, say uh, exponential uh, minus i omega t. As I said, it is a trick um, and the trick is uh, introduced at this stage for the reason that uh, we are going to talk about a gauge which uh, requires uh, taking a time derivative one and secondly uh, of course, uh, keeping in mind that we are really talking about uh, DC fields we will put omega going to 0. So, uh, as a limiting case. Okay? So, um, uh, this is a, a particular kind of harmonic uh, dependence uh, on omega that uh, we have introduced here and um, what we uh, do is that, so uh, your E is obtained uh, from uh, minus uh, del A del T, uh, we have taken, uh, it is also a minus grad phi uh, which we have, we can scale it to 0 and uh, the time uh, or uh, this from the Maxwell's equation the electric field is obtained from the uh, time derivative of the vector potential. So, this is your E of t and, and it is precisely for this reason that we have taken it uh, is a function of time because your A of t uh, it is really like E divided by i omega exponential minus i omega t. Okay? So, this is your A and if you take a derivative, so uh, take a derivative, so you take a uh, del A del T or a da dt um, that is equivalent. So, we will have a E over i omega and we will have a minus i omega uh, e to the power minus i omega t. So, this omega will cancel and the i will also cancel and, and so on. So, you, you get this uh, E equal to minus uh, del A del T that relationship to be valid and that is why. So, this is the form of the vector potential in terms of the electric field. Okay? So, now we know uh, or rather we have assumed a form for the vector potential, we can put that back into this equation. So, let me now go one step back and sort of start uh, naming these equations. So, let us call this as equation 1 and uh, this perturbation term to be equation 2 
and let us call this uh, as equation 3 and so on. So, we have to find uh, you know the this potential rather these uh, perturbation term which uh, has a form j dot a and a is assumed to have a form like this. At the end uh, after do we do all the calculations we will put omega going to 0 to uh, take the DC limit. Okay. All right. So, uh, let me um, calculate the current or the expectation value of the current in these uh, perturbed states. So, uh, these states that includes the perturbation. So, we calculate uh, J. So, uh, J is the uh, current density uh, that flows due to uh, this perturbation term that we have. So, we, we need to calculate this. All right. So, this is the job that we have in hand and um, understand that uh, uh, I remind you of uh, three pictures um, that in uh, basic quantum mechanics you might have been exposed to. One is called as the Schrodinger picture. Uh, in which you have the wave function uh, that depends upon time. but the operators do not. So, let us call any operator as uh, uh, do not depend upon time. Okay. So, this is the Schrodinger picture and then we have Heisenberg picture. Where it is just the opposite that is uh, psi does not depend on time. Uh, however, the operators depend upon time, just a reverse scenario. And if you remember that uh, we have actually calculated the uh, equation of motion by taking a d d t of O equal to O h, where O is any operator and h is a Hamiltonian, there is uh, i h cross uh, I have to write here. And so, this is the Heisenberg equation of motion. A third picture which is very important uh, for the uh, many particle system. In fact, all the uh, many particle system, the Green's function and all the perturbation theory that we talk about are developed uh, in the interaction picture. Uh, and uh, both uh, where both psi and O depend on time. Okay. So, this is in a nutshell, uh, this is the different pictures of quantum mechanics uh, that uh, one uh, deals with. And now, it is very important to realize that uh, when you calculate the expectation value of an operator, which is a physical observable, uh, it would not depend upon uh, which uh, picture you adapt to, rather it will be independent of the picture and all those results will uh, be same in all the representations. Uh, in any case, uh, since I said that the in the interaction picture, uh, both psi and h are dependent on uh, time. Or h means the Hamiltonian, which is an operator that depend upon time. So, we will resort to the interaction picture here, because you saw that the Hamiltonian or at least the, uh, the h delta h, which we are interested in is uh, time dependent through these uh, a. Uh, the vector potential. So, we will resort to this picture and of course, we will have to evolve the wave functions. So, wave functions are definitely uh, time dependent as the time uh, uh, proceeds or passes by then um, the, the wave function evolves as well. All right. So, um, any operator let us say uh, we have been writing it as O, but let us say any operator uh, in this picture, the interaction picture, it evolves as uh, some u inverse a uh, of 0 and u, which is a unitary operation and u is actually a unitary operator, which is written as uh, exponential minus i h naught t over h cross. You can set h cross to be equal to 1, otherwise you will have to carry it all the way. Uh, in any case, uh, this is a unitary operation that uh, uh, one can perform on any operator such as the Hamiltonian. 
and uh, in this particular fashion and uh, we will see the time evolution of the operator. So, A is the vector potential uh, in this particular case we are not talking about vector potential as an operator this A is ok let me uh, change this then uh, let me uh, go ahead with O because A is already the vector potential and so on. So, this is the O is the uh, an arbitrary operator and this is your uh, the unitary transformation. So, U is an unitary operator. Okay, so, this is my operator and uh, how does the wave function behave? This is also standard basically that comes from this uh, interaction picture. This evolves as some t to t naught and then psi is uh, t naught. So, let us call it as A and let us call this as B. So, this is how in the interaction picture um, the operator and the wave function evolve ok. All right. So, uh, we will have to work in this interaction picture and perform a perturbation theory uh, in order to get the expectation value of an observable. In this particular case the observable is nothing but the, uh, the current uh, density ok. All right. So, um, this one you know uh, the u t of t 0 in the interaction picture again uh, is written as minus i by h cross uh, some t 0 to t delta of h t prime and a d t prime and so on. Now, it is very important to understand in the interaction picture this is actually uh, the time evolution operator invokes the uh, perturbation term or the interaction term. Here uh, you can treat both of them to be with you know interchangeably the uh, what do you want to call them I mean this uh, same as the interaction term uh, in the language of the many particle uh, systems ok. So, uh, this is uh, how the unitary operator evolves a system a state psi of t from an initial state t 0 to a final state t ok and that involves the interaction term or the delta h that is here ok. There is another quantity called as t this is called as a time ordering operator. Now, if you uh, want to know in details uh, you can look at uh, these uh, Fetter Wolitschka, there is a, a book by Fetter Wolitschka or there is a book by G D Mahan um, and um, there are other uh, sources available uh, on the YouTube. Personally, I have a course um, on these uh, advanced condensed matter physics which deals with uh, uh, the uh, developing the formalism of the perturbation theory uh, from the scratch. So, what it does is the following it orders the times you see that there is a t 0 to t and we are writing it as an integral which means that it goes from t 0 to t 0 plus delta t then it goes to t 0 plus 2 delta t and uh, then it goes to t 0 plus 3 delta t and so on till it reaches you know uh, the t 1. So, you need to have a mechanism which uh, orders these from you know uh, the earliest time to the uh, right or left uh, whichever I mean basically to order these uh, times in the sequence that they are you know occurring and why is that important? It is important because uh, your delta h at time t 1 uh, will not commute with delta h at time t 2 in general ok. Uh, otherwise, if they commute at all times then there is no uh, problem I mean then uh, the problem is much simpler and because you have a time dependent uh, problem uh, which explicitly depends on time and then uh, you need to uh, keep a track. Uh, the way they are occurring. Oh, so, th so, this is that time ordering operator that you come across ok and um, it of course, um, uh, sort of make sure that you know uh, the i h cross uh, d u d t uh, is equal to some uh, delta h into u 
so that's that is the Schrodinger equation for or the equivalent of the Schrodinger equation for the operator. So that's the time dependent Schrodinger equation for this unitary operator u. Okay. So uh, let us understand that uh, at time t equal to infinity minus infinity sorry at time t equal to minus infinity you had nothing you had only the um, the bare system okay and at time t equal to minus infinity you have switched on the electric field okay so the system the you let the system evolve and come to uh, at the present time or at t equal to 0 and so on at this time uh, the many body ground state let's write this as 0 it's a ground state but nevertheless it's a many body ground state which may have uh, you know interactions inbuilt into it but of course, we do not have any effect of delta h at t equal to minus infinity and we will call this state as 0 uh, with a ket uh, understanding that 0 is actually a many body ground state. Okay, fine. So, all right. So, we will uh, do it step by step. So, u of t uh, it is actually u of t and with a t0 from minus infinity. Okay? So, we set t0 uh, the earliest time, the most primitive time to be at minus infinity when there was no effect of the perturbation and after that the perturbation is switched on. Okay? So, the t0 goes to uh, minus infinity and uh, because now it depends only on one time variable. Uh, we simply call it as u of t. Okay? So, you always calculate some expectation value uh, in a perturbation theory by using the different orders of perturbation theory and so on. So, we are going to calculate j of t and this j of t uh, can be calculated uh, within this uh, 0 that is uh, many body ground state evolves uh, a j of t. Uh, and a 0 and a t and so on. So, this uh, you are calculating the expectation value between the, the known states. So, this 0 is at t equal to minus infinity, but that many body ground state would evolve with time. That is why we have written 0 of t and we still assume this is a, a intrinsic assumption of perturbation theory that you still have the 0 that is a ground state to be a valid description of the system. So, your uh, the delta h term has not taken the system too far away from the ground state. So, that uh, there is no point in talking about um, the expectation value with respect to the ground state, but uh, the perturbation theory intrinsically assumes that it still is a uh, you are not too far away from the ground state and that is why the ground state expectation values can still give you meaningful um, you know corrections because of the perturbation to the um, unperturbed energies or, or other quantities like here we are talking about j um, average of j. So, uh, what is this? Uh, so, this is equal to the 0 and then you have a u inverse. So, I am evolving the state as we have done it here, here uh, u of t now t0 is uh, minus infinity. So, this and then j of t and then u of t and then a 0. Okay? So, this 0 is that many body ground state at t equal to minus infinity. All right. <coughs> All right. So, uh, we uh, will have this as, uh, so this is 0 and uh, this is a j of t and a plus uh, i over h cross uh, minus infinity to uh, t and then I use a dummy variable dt prime and then I have a commutator which is delta h and uh, so this is at a, uh, at a t prime and then a j of uh, t 
and so on okay <clears throat> so this is the uh, let me use another bracket so that it, it doesn't look like the commutator bracket okay where does this uh, come from uh, you have to understand that uh, i have done a simplification or rather skipped one step let me show you that step here so uh, our u of t is simply equal to now uh, of course uh, a time um, ordering is of course required at its minus i h cross uh, minus infinity to t uh, h delta h of uh, t prime and uh, dt prime okay so this is your uh, that and then um, I have to calculate this quantity u uh, inverse t j t and u. So u inverse t j of t and uh, u of t. So this is equal to the time uh, this thing and exponential uh, i over h cross a minus infinity to t uh, delta delta h uh, t prime and uh, dt prime uh, and now I will write a j of t and then I will write a exponential um, minus uh, i by h cross minus infinity to t uh, delta h of t prime and uh, dt prime. Okay, all right. So now what we do is that uh, we make uh, this expansion that exponential uh, minus i by h cross this minus infinity to uh, t and delta h t prime uh, dt prime. I write it as one minus i by h cross uh, minus infinity to t uh, delta h delta h t prime dt prime uh, and then of the order of delta h square is neglected okay so this term is neglected because the intrinsic assumption of a perturbation theory is that uh, we will um, not uh, of course here we want to uh, see it in the linear response of the system that is to first our power in a how does the system behave or how does the properties of the system behave and also it is true that uh, uh, in keeping with the assumption of perturbation theory uh, we are not considering um, any higher order okay so this uh, thing let's call it so this is equation number 3 let's say this is equation number 4 this is equation number 5 this is equation number 6 uh, and this is equation number 7 and so we will have maybe uh, this one as equation number 8, uh, this is equation number 9. So if you put this in equation uh, 8, putting equation 9 in equation 8, so we have a 1 uh, a plus because this u inverse is 1 plus i by h cross minus infinity to t uh, delta h t prime dt prime and a j of t okay j of t is here in uh, equation 8 and then 1 minus i by h cross minus infinity to t uh, delta of h t prime uh, and uh, dt prime okay all right so uh, i have two brackets at the two ends and uh, i have a jt in between so i'll just uh, do a multiplication so this will be simply a j of t that is 1 jt and 1 and then second term will be i by h cross i have infinity to minus infinity to t uh, delta h t prime uh, j of t okay and of course uh, you have to write dt prime uh, there uh, you can write it and then uh, the next term will come with a minus sign i by h cross 
uh, that is uh, a 1 j t and the term that is there. Uh, you understand that uh, you just do this simplification and then you will have uh, so a j of t and a delta h of t prime and a d t prime. Uh, you can actually keep the uh, j t outside uh, this uh, thing. Okay? The j of t can be uh, outside and you have a minus infinity to t and so on. Okay? So, this is your term and this can be written as uh, j of t that is the first term uh, and uh, then I uh, have uh, plus i over h cross. Now, you see that this is a delta h j and this is j delta h. So, this is like a commutator. So, this uh, is written as uh, a minus infinity to t at d t prime uh, and this h prime of t delta h of t uh, delta h and a j of t. Um, it really does not matter because the integral is over d t prime. So, it is not touching the uh, the t that uh, dependence of j. So, this is the commutator. So, this is the commutator that I have talked about at the end of the last slide here that commutator. Okay? So, and then uh, there is of course, a term which is uh, the j of t which is here uh, as well. So, uh, now this j of t is not important uh, for the reason that uh, this j of t is uh, a current density without an external electric field, okay? uh, which can be there due to a variety of reasons, but it is not important for us. We are only interested in this commutator and uh, which arises because of the electric field. All right. So, uh, we uh, got an expression for that uh, for your uh, j. Now, let me uh, get an expression for just a component of j that is maybe j x or uh, j y or j z and so on and so forth. So, this is equal to equal to 1 by h cross omega and uh, uh, I now I put the explicit form uh, I use your delta h equal to minus j dot a and uh, a I use it as uh, what, what has been written earlier that use a as uh, e over i omega exponential minus i omega t. Okay? Okay. All right. So, if you do that, then uh, the uh, particular component of the current that looks like this and uh, this is uh, equal to 1 over h cross omega and then uh, minus infinity to t uh, and uh, d t prime um, and a 0 uh, and a j i t prime and a j i t uh, and um, a 0 and uh, the you have to write the electric field. So, this is E j exponential minus i omega t prime. Okay? So, uh, the commutator of delta h and it is t prime and j at t uh, takes this form because delta h is nothing but j dot a and uh, then you use the relation for a uh, which we have assumed within a certain gauge and so this is equal to a j i t prime and a j i t. So, uh, this uh, we taken within the many body ground states and so on. Okay? Now, uh, it is um, easy to uh, see that or rather uh, it does not uh, harm us if we assume uh, the system is uh, time translationally invariant. That is we can translate time without any uh, sort of breaking any symmetry. So, it has time translation symmetry because there is nothing that uh, breaks that time translation symmetry. So, what it means is that uh, there are two times uh, t and t prime that you see there. So, these two times can be converted into one time if there is a time translational symmetry which means a t minus t prime can be written as some t double prime this is perfectly fine and uh, we can uh, in that case 
uh, your uh, the limit actually changes from minus infinity to t. Uh, so, this is becomes minus infinity to t this limit becomes equal to 0 to infinity. Okay? You can trivially see that uh, uh, j i t in that case becomes equal to 1 over h cross omega and from 0 to infinity and um, uh, we have a d t double prime and this is equal to 0 and um, j i 0 uh, so, t prime we are setting to uh, 0 and then uh, we are replacing t by t double prime because of the translational invariance and this j i uh, t double prime uh, and uh, 0 here and then we will have an exponential. Um, so, there is an exponential i omega t there inside. So, this is multiplied by uh, e j uh, exponential minus i omega t. Okay? Uh, so, this is a commutator we should not forget that this is a commutator. Okay? So, j i at 0 and j i at some t double prime uh, and then uh, you have this uh, thing to be present there. Uh, so, uh, the only you know time dependence is uh, coming as a harmonic function exponential i omega t and so on. So, this gives you the linear response of the conductivity. So, the conductivity is proportional to, so remember that uh, relation Ohm's law that j equal to sigma e. Now, you have calculated j which is the expectation value of j and this is equal to the sigma is here and this will be an exponential uh, you know a minus i omega t here. So, the sigma x y which is a Hall conductivity or the Kubo formula for the Hall conductivity is, is sigma x y equal to 1 over h cross omega uh, 0 to infinity uh, and uh, you have a 0 j y um, 0 j x t a commutator 0 and exponential i omega t and so on. Okay? So, that is the uh, formula for the Hall conductivity and uh, this is uh, a well known result. So, this is the result for the Hall conductivity and which involves only uh, commutators which are j y that is the current density in the y direction and the current density in the x direction at a different time. One of the times has been set equal to 0. And this sigma x y is a dynamical conductivity because it depends upon the frequency. And of course, when we take the DC limit that is we will put omega equal to 0, this uh, will become the, uh, the Hall conductivity that we have uh, seen. Okay. This is Kubo formula for Hall conductivity. And if you want the longitudinal conductivity that also can be uh, done. So, you have to have sigma x x where it will be uh, the current operators at two different times, but in the same direction. So, that will give you the, the longitudinal conductivity. So, what we uh, do next is that uh, this is pretty much you know the formula that we wanted to derive, but this is not uh, yet in a form that we can use it to compute. Okay? And uh, let us uh, get it into a form that uh, you know uh, we can compute this. And uh, so, what we do is uh, we can uh, write down this j of t to be equal to some u inverse j of 0 and uh, u. And we have seen this, this is the interaction picture, this is how the, the operators transform and u is nothing but exponential minus i h naught t by h cross. Okay? Then uh, we can use basically uh, the eigenstates of h 0, which we know. H 0 which are say m, n and so on so forth. Okay? So, uh, then uh, we can um, uh, write down the sigma x y omega by introducing uh, these states the basis states of or the eigenstates of H 0 as uh, 1 over H cross omega uh, 0 to infinity and a d t exponential i omega t. 
uh, and I use uh, the completeness of states that is use this n n that is equal to 1 the sum over n. Uh, so, this is uh, there and then uh, you have a term which is 0 j y uh, n n uh, j x 0 and a minus uh, 0 j x uh, n n j y 0. So, this is the simpler form in the sense that I have used uh, the information that is already inbuilt into the problem. That is uh, we know these uh, eigenstates. Okay? So, in a given problem uh, these states will have to be known these n and 0 and m etcetera the, all these things have to be known. Okay? And of course, uh, we have to write down the energy um, exponents. So, this is equal to E n minus E 0 uh, t over h cross which is that exponential i omega t and this is also exponential uh, E 0 minus E n t over h cross. Okay? Now, uh, offhand it looks like you are uh, calculating the velocity operator because j is nothing but uh, uh, if you write it is n e v. Um, even if you you know do not write that n which is an electronic density it is still e into v. So, v is the velocity. So, it is a y component of the velocity between these states of h 0 which are known and then x component of velocity and then multiplied by an exponent uh, um, involving the energies of those states and uh, minus of the j x and the j y uh, they are in opposite order or uh, uh, just the reverse order because we are talking about a, a commutator here. Okay? Uh, now, uh, we will perform this uh, energy integral. That is uh, And in order to perform the energy integral, there are uh, two things that you need to keep in mind. Okay? Now, the energy integral looks like uh, dt exponential i uh, e n minus e 0 plus omega n to t uh, and the other one uh, looks like um, so 0 to uh, infinity both the cases. Uh, and uh, dt exponential i e 0 minus e n plus omega t. I mean t uh, and then of course, there is a h that one uh, needs to put there. Uh, omega by h cross is energy omega equal to h cross omega. Okay. So, you have these integrals that you have to perform and these integrals will diverge at infinity. Uh, because these are exponential integrals. So, uh, the standard uh, technique for calculating these integrals such that they do not diverge uh, is uh, by introducing a little bit of damping. Okay? So, uh, let us say that uh, you know uh, these are um, E n minus E 0 uh, whenever uh, you have these um, if, if you just uh, perform the bare integral it will go to infinity and uh, what you do is that you change omega to omega a plus uh, some i eta or something. Okay? So, uh, once you do that this uh, will not diverge further because of this small eta and it will go into the complex plane and uh, there is also a reason that you put a plus and not a minus because um, uh, you uh, are considering t greater than 0 right? from 0 to infinity. So, there is no negative time. So, you want to uh, do a contour integral uh, by enclosing it in the upper half plane so that you can use Jordan's lemma. So, this integral uh, over the real line is converted into a complex integral by you know uh, sort of trying to close it from the upper half such that in this big circle. So, this is from 0 to infinity. So, you close it and it becomes a closed integral and then you can use the residue theorem. Uh, please get uh, used to this uh, complex integrals because they are um, uh, they are ubiquitous in, in terms of uh, 
uh, these all these contexts of uh, condensed matter physics, uh, Green's functions and so on. Okay. <clears throat> so, once you do that, uh, then the, uh, the sigma x y takes a form uh, which is equal to minus i, I over omega. So, after you do the uh, integral over time from 0 to infinity by using the complex integral. Now, just to remind you, so you initially had only over the real line from 0 to infinity. What you do is that you introduce small uh, imaginary parts so that the pole that is where uh, wherever you have pole of this or rather this uh, the resonance, you bump it up by a plus i eta here and enclose it. Now, it encloses this simple pole or whatever is the nature of the pole and then you can use 2 pi i into sum of residues, sum of residues. Okay. And then uh, you perform this integral. Uh, please uh, go through this uh, text called, uh, there is a textbook uh, on complex analysis by Churchill. Okay. It is a very good book for complex analysis which uh, tells you how to do the complex integrals and so on. So, this is equal to that and then uh, of course, your uh, n uh, which is this uh, n here, this is not same uh, as the as 0. So, these are some uh, excited states of the system and that makes sense because for uh, carrying the current um, uh, it, it has to you know visit the excited state uh, because there is a conductivity in the system. So, the system would go from the ground state to the excited state and the excited states are uh, uh, assumed to be different than the ground state. So, this is equal to 0 uh, j y um, n and uh, n uh, j x uh, and 0 uh, divided by uh, the uh, energy denominator which is given by E n uh, minus E 0 uh, and a plus uh, another term. So, uh, uh, the term is 0 uh, j x n uh, n j x 0 divided by h cross omega plus e 0 minus e n. Okay? So, you get this energy denominator. Now, we are almost there uh, excepting that uh, we have to take the DC limit and uh, DC limit means omega going to 0 and how do we take that? Uh, let us um, you know uh, sort of write down the denominator uh, as E n uh, minus E 0 okay? and this is equal to uh, you write it as E n minus E 0 and uh, you write it as 1 plus h cross omega divided by E n minus E 0 and then you write it as 1 divided by E n minus E 0 uh, multiplied by 1 plus h cross omega divided by E n minus E 0 to the power minus 1 and they do a binomial expansion and keep only the term which is um, with the first term only which is linear in omega. Uh, so, this is 1 by E n minus E 0 plus uh, so this is equal to minus h cross omega uh, divided by e n uh, minus e 0 whole square. So, I do a binomial expansion and the minus sign uh, gets replaced here okay, at this place and then uh, you do this and then of course, these are terms which are omega square that are neglected. Similarly, you do that for the other term, the second term inside the square bracket which is h cross omega plus E 0 minus E n and this will be like E 0 minus E n um, and uh, a minus h cross omega divided by E uh, 0 minus E n whole square uh, and plus omega square order of omega square which again can be neglected. Uh, now, um, we actually uh, drop this term, the first term which is here. So, these terms we drop. Okay. Uh, in fact, for Hall effect, these terms do not make a contribution and you keep the 
term that is um, uh, linear in omega because this has no omega part. So, this is like a DC thing and uh, I mean DC contribution which is not an important thing and in any case that uh, they really do not um, uh, in a translationally invariant system they do not um, contribute to the Hall resistivity and so on. Okay. So, uh, what you do is uh, you put them there in that equation and then you see uh, very nicely there is a omega in the denominator of equation. So, I have equation 9 and let us call it as equation 10 uh, and equation 11 which is uh, the Kubo formula and uh, say this is equation 12 again another form of Kubo formula 13 which is another form of Kubo formula we are progressively getting you know better and better in terms of its computability okay so now if you keep this term either of the term which are same because there's a h cross omega and there's a square in the denominator and the square means that en minus e0 square is same as e0 minus en square and the omega will cancel with the omega in the uh, denominator of equation 13 okay so uh, once you do this your uh, sigma x y becomes equal to uh, uh, now I do not need actually uh, the omega gets cancelled. So, it becomes a DC expression and this is equal to i h cross uh, again n not equal to 0 and uh, 0 uh, j y n uh, n j x 0 uh, and uh, minus 0 j x n uh, n j y 0 j y 0 and either you call it e n minus e 0 whole square or e 0 minus e n which are same. Okay. So, this is really the Kubo formula for the Hall conductivity. Okay. You can also get the longitudinal conductivity. Uh, there are uh, many things that we have said uh, which are important that the diamagnetic term should also come in in order to calculate the, uh, the conductivity, uh, the longitudinal conductivity. But here, uh, nevertheless, we are uh, interested in the, uh, the off diagonal form of conductivity which has this form. Let us call this as equation 14 and this is what we wanted to calculate. And this when you calculate it on a quantum Hall system, it gives you uh, values which are h over e square and uh, there is a uh, integer in the denominator uh, or you can call the, the uh, so the conductivity. So, that is the resistivity, the conductivity is actually n into e square over h where n is an integer. Okay. That is where uh, we uh, stop for now and we will continue from here. Mm -hmm.